Okay, this is basically a troubleshooting video to establish um, if, your, if your boat doesn't power up when you put the switch on, you've got the battery installed and you simply get no light or no meter, no lights and no sound. Uh, even though the battery is installed, putting the switch on doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm going to take you through the steps and the process that you'll follow to, 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 to see where the fault is or may be. Okay, so first thing is you make sure that your battery is fully plugged in. The, this, this particular plug set is a two-part set. It's basically got an anti-spark connection when you first connect and then you've got to push it all the way home for the plug to be able to handle the current that the, that the boat draws. So with the plug plugged in, switch it on, still nothing. Fine, now we will check, the next step is to actually check the voltage on the battery. Okay, so if you have a, a voltmeter, a multimeter like this, you're going to select the volt range, DC, uh, something above 20 volts. So my next on my scale is 200, that's fine. Put the positive lead into the positive socket like that, and I have voltage, 28, 23.8, that's fine, plenty enough to run the boat. So there's no problem with the battery, the battery's got voltage. Okay, so with the battery removed, we basically want to determine if it's not the battery, we've got battery voltage, could it be the switch? Now the switch could go faulty if this little boot gets a hole in it. Let's, you know, if, you've, if somebody's used the switch with their fingernail, they could cut a slit in it, water would go inside and it would no longer work as a switch. The rocker would be saturated and then it wouldn't work. So what you want to do is you want to fish into the back of the boat and you want to find the wires coming off the switch. So in essence, you feel the switch, you feel right back until you find the switch, then you move forward, find the wires that are coming off the switch, and then fish the, the pair of wires that are connected to the switch, fish them forward. They'll either be, they'll be the same color, it'll either be green or black, one of the two. But okay, once you've got them out like that, so on this side, the side going to the back is the switch, and the side, the, this side of the wires is going to the, to the panel. You disconnect them. Okay, and now you connect the ones which are coming from the panel, not from the back of the boat. You can connect those to each other. Okay, so with these basically connected to each other like that, the switch is bypassed. But whilst we are there, we can actually check the switch. Um, that would be a matter of connecting, selecting the ohm scale on your on your meter. Oops. Okay, so basically I've hooked one lead into the one side using one hand now. I can touch the other side and when I put the switch on, I get continuity. So the meter reads zero, zero, zero and I get the, the, the tone indicating that there is continuity. When I put the switch on, it means the switch is in good order. So the fault is not with the switch. So now we proceed. Um, with, the, with the two wires from the panel, now plugged into each other, so the switch is in any case isolated. We can now put the, reconnect the battery. Okay, so with the battery reconnected, the switch wires jumpered, we've double confirmed um, that there's something else wrong because we've already proved that the switch is working and jumping out those two wires or shorting out those two wires um, and now connecting the battery, we still have no power. So there's something beyond the battery, the switch, the connectors, and now we're going to move forward through the through the circuit. All right, so we basically have to remove, we have to lift the panel out of the boat to get to the underside to where the workings are. Essentially, there are four screws here you need to take out, and then all around the panel there are screws. The first five are all exactly the same. On this block, the outer ones are longer, the inner ones are shorter. So it, they do have to go back exactly the same way. You can't put these thick, long screws anywhere else. Those five are the same. They go back the same way on the, on the two blocks, the outer sides are the long ones and the inside are the short ones. I won't waste time on the video. I'll do it and then I'll get back to you. Or I'll start again when I've got it opened. Right, so with the panel loosened, you need to remove the little arms. You never remove those screws and take those arms off. Otherwise, you lose the position on the servo. So you unclip these. Now, on the different boats have got different quick links. Um, on this particular boat, it's got these plastic ones. So once you've, once you've taken it off, you just slide the, the arm underneath the deck like that. Oops, it has. Same on that side. You slide that away. 
All right, another important thing is that depending on which boat you've got or depending on which autopilot you've got, on the earlier video showing the disassembly of the panel and so on, um, this cable here, which comes from the GPS module located in the front of the boat, it plugs in along the front edge of the autopilot, but on this particular model it doesn't. It comes from a board way down there, so what I'm going to suggest is you unplug this lead here. You just press, you just push the little flat screwdriver in there and press down on the clip and push it out. You can get this out of the way, like so. And now you can see better down the bottom to be able to pull that that one out. What it looks like, it's got this little clip, a little nail clip. So when it clips in, when you press down there, it releases. And when you release it that way, it, it clips in. All right, so you have to remove this cable to be able to lift the panel. Now, you don't have, in the in the first video, it actually shows you removing the entire motor. You don't have to do any of that. We just want to flip the panel over. We can lay it on its back on the boat. Um, I'm just going to put a, a towel here so that we've got something for it to rest on. Okay, so just another thing. I've placed the screws where they came from. Um, so you, opposite the holes. I can't say that's ideal uh, whilst you're working. So, but just make a note that the long one is there, long one is there, and so on. You can then put them all together away from the workings, like so. Just keep them all together. Now we're going to flip the panel over. Okay, so now battery disconnected, we're going to simply carefully lift the, the panel out, slowly lift it up, push the wires out so they're not, <coughs> not jammed. On the other side is this little, it's, just make sure you get all the wires loose like that. Um, I'm not sure if we, can, we may have to pull this little rubber out. Now this is an important piece of foam because it keeps the motor wires nice and flat against the side of the boat. So. There next to the gearbox is a piece of foam that keeps the connectors just below the surface. Keep the wires straight up the side and then you use this piece of foam to keep them, to secure them so they sit nicely. And when it's all loose like that, now the tendon, let's see if we can go forward. Okay, there should just be enough room. Yeah, there's just enough room to be able to fold it over like that without disconnecting anything else. And now we are looking at the actual circuit. So this, as I said to you, are, is, is, are the wires that go to the switch. We've jumped them out and it will now act as our switch. So no need to put your hand underneath. We can test using this, uh, this pair of wires as a switch. Okay, so basically there are no open connections that you can easily get to positive and negative. So uh, what, what you can do for now is easiest is just to poke right through the wire. This is silicon wire, so if you make a little hole, it will close itself essentially. You can put a drop of super glue on there afterwards, but you simply poke straight through through the silicon until you touch the wire, and you do exactly the same. Make it always the same place. So right next to the the sleeving there, and let's say right right next to the strap on that side. And if you look at the meter now, you see I've got a reading. That means it's arriving from the battery, and it's a cross positive negative. I've got I've got a reading. This device here is you could say the fuse, but it's an electronic fuse, meaning that it will trip if the current exceeds a certain amount, but it will reset itself. So if there's a fault condition, this will open, and the idea is that it'll protect your battery. Um, if there is if there's no if there's no short circuit per se, then this will remain closed and the, the current will flow. So we want to measure on either side of this device. First we measured there we had voltage. And if I come to this side and I poke through there and I measure, ah, oh, I've got voltage there. So it means that there's no short circuit that's actually making the, the trip switch trip. Um, and generally speaking, if it was one of the major devices, you would have a burning smell uh, of mouth electronics. All right, so now we basically have measured there, we've measured there, and now we're going to measure on this side of this device. So I click through there, I push through there, and I have no reading whatsoever. Definitely got contact, there's no reading. So in essence, the voltage is arriving from the battery, through the, kit, through the plug, through the trip switch, it's arriving on the input of this device. Now this is a MOSFET power switching circuit. Uh, it's the actual switch that, 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 that uh, switches the voltage uh, or supplies power from the battery to the speed controller. So following on from here, this is the speed controller. Um, and unless there's 
some smell or smoke, that very, very seldom gives any problem. So we're going to go back here and we're going to believe that because that is still in play or that is still, uh, the circuit is still closed, that there isn't a short circuit. So I'm suspecting this device, we're going to open this device and make some measurements there. Okay, so basically you're just going to slice through, just going to slice through the, the sleeving. Going to remove that to expose the device underneath. Okay, so to be able to work on this, you need to turn this over. Um, okay, I have another piece on this side. All the sleeving removed. This is what it looks like. You basically yours is orientated that way. Left to rotate it this way. And now we can see where all the wires go to. So here is the, let me take my screwdriver pointer. There's the green wire that goes on there. That's the, that's the trigger or the gate uh, on a MOSFET. This is the source and that's, uh, that is the drain. So when you, when you, when you apply negative to this rail, then it basically makes the transistors, the three MOSFETs that are on this board conduct. So it'll take that voltage, um, that input and put it on the output. So that's what we're going to measure for. We know that we, okay, we will check that we get negative there. Um, and then we'll see if, this, if the MOSFETs are switching. Okay. All right, so you can see carefully that, uh, let me just double check myself. Okay, um, with this connected like this, basically this green wire is going through this jumpers and is arriving on this negative line. So in essence, that is negative. So if I want to measure, I simply measure across there and across there, and there I've got voltage. But now, if I measure from here to there, we, that's, we, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now I measure, I measure across from the negative to there, and I have no voltage. So in essence, there's something wrong with this board. The MOSFETs are not switching. We know that there is negative being applied because I'm able to get a reading from there across the input. But if I take the same negative and I measure there, I get, I get no output. All right, so the way to check this would be to put a jumper um, across from there to there, which basically shorting out the input to the output, you can do that. You can't put a, you can't put a jumper from the negative to any of the positives, but certainly from this rail, which is shaped like an L here, to this T part, you can put a jumper. And um, if it is this board that's at fault, then automatically you will have power. Okay, so I've just taken a piece of insulated wire <clears throat> and I've cleaned off the ends and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it there and I'm going to put it across there, just like that. Okay, there we go. And now it's making. If I take it off, basically it goes away. So that definitely tells me that there's something wrong with this module. We've definitely got negative. <clears throat> we are applying negative. I'm able to measure negative there because I can measure the positive. That means that this board is not switching. So I don't know exactly what it is wrong with this board, but it's conceivable that, uh, so we'd have to, have to replace this board. There's, there's two things you could try. Um, that is just to resolder all the various joints. Um, leave that one because it's underneath of the wire, but you can just do that one, those, that one, that one, that one. So there's basically eight you'll do. Um, and if that doesn't work, then we can actually, as a temporary measure, the temporary fix, you can, you can solder a jumper across there. And that will put this permanently on. What it will mean to you is that you can't use the switch on the boat, but you can use the boat. You'll have to disconnect the battery if you want to power the boat off, and you, or you could just leave it on and disarm it um, for however many hours using it. It doesn't draw that much current in standby, um, and with a big LiPo battery, you could use it. Um, and if this board is faulty, that's something that we'd have to get to you. Okay, so I'm just going to run some solder on all these joints. Just make sure that there's a nice flow solder on there. Just like so. Just in case one or more of those contacts are not making. And then we'll try it. Okay. Alright, so having done that let's see if I get any power no still no power okay so the next the only thing we can do now is to put a jumper from there to there and that we have proven does already work let me just make it up. okay so basically a, a piece of uh, three quarter mil uh, cable 
it's in the end and essentially you're just going to solder that there and on that side Nice good joint obviously like so and then you can cut that off right we'll test again okay so basically even whether 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 this is now connected or disconnected it makes no difference in other words if the switch is on or off it's going to make no difference if i put the battery on you can see it's disconnected switch is off and if i connect the battery it immediately powers up so I'm pushing that a little bit deeper, there we go. That's what I was telling you about the plug earlier, it needs to go all the way. But in essence, here we go. With the power connected, with that jumper across there, it's permanently connecting the input to the output and running the rest of the circuit. Okay, so um, if it happens that your MOSFET switching circuit is faulty and you've had to do that, you're going to have to get a new one and we will get that off to you. Um, when you receive it, you will need to solder three wires. You'll have to put that, it will come to you just as a block like that. You will resolder that wire there, that wire there, and that wire there. It's got to be good soldering, so you need a good solid soldering iron, and ideally somebody who knows how to solder um, to get good flowing joints, uh, so they're not, you know, haven't got a poor connection. And then once you've got it in, we'll, we'll supply a piece of heat shrink, which you will slip up here to start, and when it's all installed, you'll slip the heat shrink back over, and just heat it up and that will melt down and you'll put your strap back turn the turn the board back over again and that will be that's the fix for for the mosfet board typically if this goes um in other words if this had all worked and it still didn't work the next device in line would have been the speed controller this line here provides the five volts uh, to the autopilot and all the rest of the lights and these three wires out here supply power to the motor. Um, if you find that you've got voltage here, but still absolutely nothing anywhere else, then it will be that device, but that'll be for another video.